Verse 3, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. Vayakam Yonah levroach Tarshisha. And rose up Jonah to flee to Tarshish. The Lord told Jonah to arise, and arise he did, quickly and with determination. But it was not in obedience to the Lord. It was to renounce his position and his commission. Instead of Nineveh, he chose Tarshish. The meaning of the name Tarshish is debated. But to a Hebrew audience, it might have appeared to indicate two words which together mean dove white or white dove. If this is so, it is more than coincidence that a lesser used word for dove, a turtle dove, is found in the story about a fleeing dove. It is as if he were flitting about to find a place to flee to, and his eyes alighted on a place which bears the traits of who he is. Tarshish also goes all the way back to the Table of Nations in Genesis chapter 10. Tarshish is listed as a son of Javan, who is the son of Japheth, the eldest of Noah. There it says of him and his brothers, From these the coastland peoples of the Gentiles separated into their lands, everyone according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. And so in this story, all three sons of Noah are involved. Shem is Israel, Ham is Nineveh, and Japheth is Tarshish. And they are listed in the order as is listed in the book of Genesis. And I didn't even realize this until yesterday morning when I was practicing my sermon. And suddenly it dawned on me, what a marvel is going on in the book of Jonah. The location of Tarshish is generally thought to be where Spain or Cyprus is today. Although that is widely debated and people love to argue over it, nobody really knows. It was a trading city well known in scripture though. Jonah wasn't willing to go to Nineveh to cry out to them about their wickedness, but he was willing to go to another Gentile land in order to keep from doing what he was called to do. There is a moral lesson for us here. Jonah was directed to go to a location north and east of Israel. It is where the lands of his past were located and of which his forefathers had departed from in order to go to Canaan. Rather than go there, he goes in the opposite direction, heading to a land north and west of Israel. With sin and rebellion, there is no middle ground. If one is disobedient to the Lord, they are as far removed from him as they would have been near him in obedience. One is either in his favor and near to his throne, or they are out of his favor and nearer to hell. Like the rich man who went sorrowfully away from the Lord, and like the disciples that turned and no longer walked with him, Jonah also turned from him in rebellion. The actual reason for his flight is given by himself in chapter 4. Here's what he says, Ah, oh Lord, was this not what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. He knew that the turning of the Gentiles would lead them from their enmity with the Lord to a position of favor with him. He determined that he would not be a part of that, knowing that their favor would infringe upon the privileges which Israel had above them. He thought that it would mean that they were no longer the elect chosen nation of God. Is anyone seeing a foreshadowing of the church in Israel here? It is exactly what we should be seeing. In what is an ironic twist, he was willing to cut himself off from the Lord in order to not allow someone else to participate in the Lord's favor. And this is exactly how history has repeated itself in the Jews of Jesus' time. They were so unwilling to accept that Gentiles could share in his grace that they willingly cut themselves off from his favor. And this same pattern continues to this day with many Jews and Judaizing sects of Christianity. They willingly cut themselves off from the Lord's favor by inserting the law where the law does not belong. It is the main theme of the book of Galatians and the poison that Paul warns against there still permeates the lives of countless souls who would rather be cast into hell than simply accept that the grace of God has gone forth to the undeserving. One theme of the book of Acts is that of getting the Jews to realize that Gentiles were to be considered just as much the people of the Lord as are the Jews. Many rejected this, many continue to do so.